Everyone look around for a minute. I want you to just look at who you're standing in love with. Look at who you are standing in love with. Yes. Who? Gosh. Is life amazing or what? Yes, it is. It's amazing. It's like this vibration today. It's just like amazing. Whether it's the beautiful dew that's falling down on us, I don't know, or your beautiful faces that are looking at me. I'm not quite sure if it's all of those. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for making it out on a beautiful Sunday morning. Thank you for those that are on with us live streaming. Thank you to the band. Thank you to Patricia and Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. I really am aiming at us doing something magnificent today. I'm aiming at asking each and every one of you to lean in, lean in, lean in so much that you are living in the presence with every breath you take. That to be in the present moment is where our power is. When we're taking steps in life, when we're moving forward in life, when we're stepping into the next adventure in our life, we must be in the present moment. If we decide to carry the baggage of yesterday, it's going to get really heavy. So if we're in this present moment, all is possible. And I want you to be present to the presence. Catch that. I want you to be present to the presence with every breath you take. Because it's there. So why not be present to it? I think we came into this body temple to activate it, to live it so fully, to know that spirit wants to be so actualized through you that it came in lifting you in to be present to the presence with every breath. You said yes when you came in. You said yes to this ride. And yes. it's a really good one. Yes. It's a really good one. No matter how bumpy it gets, it's a really good ride. So I'm going to ask you today to do something with me. I'm going to ask you to tap your heart. Everybody tap your heart. Just remind you to stay present to the presence. Reminds us to get out of our head and come right back to in here to our heart. Just be like, whew, when the ride gets rough, tap it a lot. All right? I want you to strap on your seat. We're going strap on your belt. We're getting ready to go on the roller coaster ride. Because when we get ready for the roller coaster ride, no matter how rolly bumpy this ride is, we stay present to the presence through every breath we take. We're strapped in, ready, awake, and aware. Anything's possible. So no matter how bumpy it is, you have the tools right there to activate what is the next choice I'm going to make? Am I going to expand or am I going to contract? We have the invitation today to always expand, even when it's hard, expand, breathe, whoo, breathe. When we get on that roller coaster ride, what do we know? We know it's going to end at some point, right? We know it's this wonderful ride, but at some point it's going to end. But we're surrendering to the ride. Whether you ride roller coasters or you ride a Ferris wheel, you're surrendering once you get on, yes? We have to trust. In that process, we have to trust that we can't get back off. We can't say, excuse me, excuse me, time out. I know I'm at the top of the mountain. Just stop this machine. <laughs> we have to ride it out. So we're surrendering, we're trusting, trusting, and we must practice every moment. Practice, trust, and surrender. Practice, trust, and surrender. I love that you read from St. Francis today. Yes. I love that. Took me right back. Two years ago, I was with Reverend Michael. Reverend Michael says, good morning. He always says, good morning. He always says, Kim, did you say good morning? So sometimes I forget. So good morning. <laughs> and good morning from Agape. Um, we were in Assisi. We are on a wonderful adventure. And there was a small amount of us from Agape. And we got to be in Assisi one day, right, right in the hub of all of St. Francis. And the most profound experiences kept happening in the silence of just being present to that energetic field. Now, in that moment, we were surrendering, trusting, and absolutely practicing. So in those profound days that I got to watch over Michael, we hardly said a word as we were walking out to this sacred space to meditate, but every few, I don't know, whether it was feet or how far, he would just stop. And everyone would silently stand there and pray. And so it is. And then we walk a little bit farther, we get a little bit farther to where we're at, stop. Say another prayer. A little farther stop till we got to the place where we just meditated for hours and hours and hours and had profound experiences because we were surrendering to being present to the presence 
there, or whether we were in the plane flight on the way over, or wherever we were, we were practicing being present to the presence. So that wonderful energetic field of St. Francis was bubbling up everywhere because it's energy. St. Francis left his energy, that energetic field of consciousness, right there for us to lean into us, to it. We can do that at any moment. In the middle of the streets of New York, in the middle of this location right here, where you're at at home, driving down the freeway, we get to surrender trust and be in the presence. And I want us to stay awake to that every moment, every day. Stay awake to it. On that same trip, I had this beautiful opportunity that I got to practice the presence in the midst of life. We were walking as a group through the streets of Italy, and then we were on a really small street, really tiny, tiny, tiny street, and the cars were literally right here, and, and buildings were right here, and one of my wonderful practitioners that was with me, a friend, was behind me, and I felt energy was going, something's odd, something was very odd behind me, and I was like, I turn around and go, are you okay? And tears were coming out of her face, she goes, no, I'm not okay. As you know, when you travel on deep spiritual journeys, things come up. And when I said, do you need prayer? She was, yes. And I said, okay, and I'm looking around, and I go, she was, now. <laughs> so, Here? And she said, yes. And I went, okay, I'm surrendering to the presence. Literally grabbed hands, and I kid you not, cars are this close, racing down the street. People are speaking Italian, passing us, getting very upset because we're taking up too much space. And so they're going by, and we're still in prayer. Practice the presence wherever we can. Practice, practice, practice. We get to do this every moment, our opportunity to lean in and step. We embrace the journey wherever we're at, at the beach, picking up garbage, conscious couples. We get to embrace the journey. The journey is bumpy. And even in the bump, surrender, trust, practice. Surrender, trust, practice. There was a few years ago that I had a wonderful opportunity to stretch in my stepping into the adventure, stepping into what's possible now, and absolutely knowing that I trusted Spirit so much that I was beginning a new chapter in my life. And as I stepped into it, I had no idea what was about to come, the roller coaster ride. But I said yes. I listened, I prayed, I said yes. So as I stepped into this journey, it was the beginning of January, the very first weekend of January, first out of five weekends, all sorts of adventures took place. First weekend comes, my son goes out to go for his wonderful motorcycle ride, he wants to have his first motorcycle race. He heads out, I say, I'll see you in the morning, I'll be there right behind you. He says, okay, Mom, see you in the morning. I get in the car the next day, I'm driving down PCH, and all of a sudden I get the call. He's had a terrible accident. He's on his way to the hospital. Now he's miles away, miles away. Trust, surrender, practice. All I knew was give me the name of the hospital, I will be there the whole time driving. Trust, surrender, practice, prayer, 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 God surrounding him, knowing all is well. Get to a hospital I've never been to, walk in, Lucas is doing okay. Little banged up, doctor comes in, looks at us and says, he's gonna be all right, this was a miracle, your son is okay. You can take him home, he's just a little sore. Thank you. Thank you, God. Go home, take the busy rest. The next weekend comes. I'm thinking, it's the beginning of January. This is good. We're beginning stepping again, embracing the journey. All of a sudden, the next Friday comes. I'm going down to check on the horses. I walk in to see the horses, and one's missing. And I look around thinking, okay, where's the other horse? We have two horses. There's only one close by. What's going on? Turn in one direction and see that one of our horses, our sweet little old lady, is upside down, caught between a wall and a fence. This was not good. And as I saw her, slipped into movement immediately to know, to bless her, pray for her, run to get the telephone, call the fire department, trust, surrender, practice, practice, practice. Before the fire department comes, friend comes, pray out loud, just like on the streets of Italy. It was like right here, who sobbing tears, praying. There's a miracle, we're accepting it, that the, the grace of God is lifting this beautiful creature out of this ravine in prayer. By the fire time the fire department arrived, we had listened to God well enough and moved certain stones, and that horse contorted her body in a way to get out of there. Miracle again, the fire department looked at me, oh, this was a miracle, how did this happen? We said lots of prayer, lots of prayer, lots of prayer. 
Week three comes of January. This is the same year. I just want to make sure you're all with me. I have not jumped years. The third week comes. I walk through the house, I look at everybody, and I go, all right, I'm going to wrap everybody in bubble wrap. Nobody's moving. The door's locked, and everybody's staying right here. So we sit home and watch movies. Safe weekend. Fourth weekend comes, in January. I am going down to check on the horse that was hurt and putting medicine on her. Putting medicine on her, and this whole deja vu happens. Does anyone have not a deja vu? What do you call it when you get a flash of something that could be occurring? I get this flash of Lucas calling. Oh, forgot to tell you this part. Doctors okayed him. He was so fine, he could go back out motorcycle riding again. He's back out motorcycle riding. I get this deja vu as I'm putting medicine on her of him saying, uh, Mom, you're not going to believe this, but I'm in another accident. And in my head, I'm like, I said, oh, that's silly. I know you're joking, right? And I, I played that all out. All of a sudden, then I finished putting medicine on the horse. I go up to the house and phone rings. <coughs> Hey, how you doing? Mommy and I can believe this. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. Wait, I, that was that was something that I heard down there. This is not really on me. I'm in another accident. I'm on my way to the hospital. I went, like, oh yeah, take a breath, take a breath, take a breath. Trust, practice, surrender. Get to the hospital. Sure enough, this time he's got a big bump on his shoulder, broken collarbone. Doctor says he's gonna be okay, broken collarbone can heal. Woo! Four weeks into January. This is a really fun roller coaster ride, right? Now, everybody's safe. I want you to just catch that. Everybody's safe. P answered prayer everywhere. Take a step into the next day. We make it to Friday. Again, I'm about to bubble wrap everybody, but I'm still in prayer. All of a sudden, my beautiful daughter is ready to go for up for a play that's going up next week. Is on a show. She wants to go have a sleepover to friends that I hadn't met. Talk to the mother. Everything's fine. Great. I'll pick you up in the morning. Everything's good. Middle of the 10.30 at night, I get a call. <laughs> you guys are going to say, I think she needs to put her phone away, right? <laughs> no more phone calls on the weekends. Call is an emergency. Your daughter has fallen through a window. You need to get to the hospital. Now, I could hear the screams on the other end. This one was serious. <laughs> and the phone disconnected. And I packed bags fast. I'm packing bags, just not knowing how long we're going to be at the hospital, what's going to happen. Phone call rings again. This time it's the fire captain. Ma'am, is this your daughter? That isn't my daughter. Could you please tell me where you're going? Yes, we think we're going to this hospital. Can you please tell me how bad it is? She's, she went through a plate glass window. You need to get to the hospital. So, in the car. God, surround her, surround the ambulance, surround everybody. I'm knowing and accepting that divine guidance is right there. All her needs are met. Lila's in, just in a bubble of safety. You can imagine that was the longest car ride to the hospital. And every mile was surrounded in prayer. Because whether it's to the hospital in joy for the birth of a child or to the hospital for an emergency, God is right there. So we get to step in and lean in, in those moments that the roller coaster ride takes us on a turn that we don't know what's going to happen. Are you with me on this? Yes. Like we must lean in and know, even now, you can be on your knees and knowing that this roller coaster ride is bumpy and you get to pray. You get to set your intention. We have these beautiful opportunities and I was activating every single one of them. And when I found that hospital way out somewhere, because it was in an area on the other side of the hill that I had not been, and ran in that night, by this time it's 11 o'clock at night, and said, my daughter is here somewhere, I need to see her. And the woman at the front desk says, this was the best one. Well, you can sit right down there, and we'll call you. And I go, oh, no, 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 there's no sitting. There's no sitting. Uh, just, just point me in a direction. And sure enough, right then, a door opened, and the sweetest, most angelic, biggest male nurse I've ever seen in my life looked at me and goes, says, ma'am, come right here. I'm like, thank you. Answered prayer. Now, he had been wrapping her, literally, in bandages, but she was okay, sobbing. And five hours later, with 45 stitches in her, she was okay. Yes. And now, to this day, she looks and says, yeah, I fell through a window. Can you believe that? And God caught me. Because she knows that. 
So the journey I'm saying to you is even though that roller coaster ride is bumpy, prayer's got our back. God is with us every step. Yeah. When it was the middle of the night, yes, the middle of the night when I had to look at her and say, honey, I know you've just been had they got 35 stitches on both arms and now you gotta turn over because they gotta put stitches on the back of your legs. She looked at me, she goes, Mama, are you serious? And I said, Yes, I love you and I'm gonna help you turn it over. She was still in prayer at that moment, knowing I'm so grateful. She looked up and she goes, I knew that I was absolutely being held in those moments. She was prayed up before it even occurred. So when we are living in surrender, trust, surrendering to the presence, trusting the presence, and then practicing everything we know, we are cultivating the consciousness that we can courageously continue to step and embrace our journey because we can step into every moment. Every moment's a new beginning. She left there, got home the next morning, and literally knew this is a new beginning, and I am A-OK, -okay, and I'm so grateful for life. So grateful for life. So this is where we get to keep remembering, and I've mentioned this before, and I want to revisit it. We get to look at the pearls that came from the journey, not just the story of the journey. The story is the story. I get to tell you the story to cultivate the pearls, because what had to be cultivated in my children and myself in that five-week period was a lot. There was strength, there was compassion, there was enormous love and support. There was a belief in something bigger than us that just expanded beyond any parameters we've lived before. Because when you look at what are the pearls that I'm cultivating, because this occurred. <coughs> and I'm inviting you to look at that today in your roller coaster ride right now in this moment as you even think for a moment of the journey each and every one of you have been upon. And the bumpiness and the rides that you're thinking, you may have thought, why did that occur? Right now, ask yourself, who did I have to become to still be here because that occurred? Who did you have to become? What had to rise up within you? Was it courage? Was it strength? Was it absolutely compassion for yourself? Was it an expansive level of patience? Something had to rise up in you to be here or you would still be stuck in that story. Does that make sense? And I'm asking you to live in those pearls of wisdom. Cultivate those pearls within your soul. Leave those in your heart. Take those in your heart that the pearls of wisdom from your journey give you the courage to step into the next step of life and begin again. Every moment is a new beginning. Every day is a new beginning. Every opportunity to remember again, who am I? Remember again who you are. You're an unstoppable light bearer of pure truth, absolute spiritual energy, living fully in this lifetime. Activate that every single moment of your life by tapping your heart and remembering, whoo, this roller coaster is good, even when it's bumpy. Mm -hmm. We have so many opportunities to stand in it and know yourself in those moments. Know that you are unstoppable beyond anything. There is no limitation, no cap. There's only more love. Every new step gives you an opportunity to be more yourself. Every time you embrace your journey with, yes, this is my journey. And I'm going to love it. Even when it's hard. Yes. Can you say yes to that? I'm loving it when it's hard. Because when it's easy, you still get to be in the high of that as well. But let's trust it as it goes like this. Yes. It goes up and down, and we get to ride it every step of the way. And if it's a tough day, you get to take a breath, tap your heart, and think, whoo, God's got this, bam. Who said that? Who puts that in your affirmation? I love it. Bam. I am good. You can walk around the house and keep saying that. Bam. I'm good. All's yes. good. Yes. Everybody get wrapped in rubble, um, bubble wrap today and sit down and watch a movie because some weekends are just like that. Yes. And other ones are just where it takes you. When people look at me and I've had people say, you must just tell your kids they can't do anything anymore. You're like, did you stop all that silly nonsense? Did you take away the horses and the motorcycles and everything else? And I said, absolutely not. Right. Absolutely not. That's their expression. Do we pray a lot on them? You bet. Do we get on a motorcycle and say prayers before you even fire that engine up? You bet. 
Do we bless those horses before? Absolutely. But that, that's their journey of expression. My daughter wants to put a tattoo on that scar that has like beautiful vines on it now. And I suppose that makes you happy, then so be it. So we each get to remember the journeys, the ride. Can I just unbuckle, unbuckle for a minute and just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for this ride. Because it's mine. It's yours. You each have your own beautiful adventure. Ride it and then step into the next moment. Go right here, right now. There's no beginning. You do not have to carry the weight of the story into this moment. I want you to step into it as your new beginning by carrying the pearls of wisdom that you gained from that story. Okay? Powerful. and go straight to prayer, please. Let's just take all this love, all this yes, and just know right here, right now, right here, right now. We are grateful. That the power and the presence is so much more than enough. That we are present to the presence being activated so fully in our lives so fully that there is no moment, no breath that isn't just a stretch of spirit just moving through each and every one of us that are in this room and everywhere else on the planet, that we are open and available as instruments of the Most High to shine, to radiate love, to give it, to receive it, and to lean in and allow Spirit, God, to guide us. All is well this day. I bless everyone here. I bless that their roller coaster rides are adventurous. I bless that they're surrendering, they're trusting, and absolutely practicing everything they know to the next level of their evolution of their soul. Thank you, Spirit, for lifting us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for this beautiful Soul Center OC and that it gives us the space to grow together to remember who we are in the presence of one another. I am grateful. I bless us all. I bless us all. That we are present to the presence with every breath, every step. That we embrace this journey with love. And for this and so much more, I give thanks. Blessing those on our own prayer list for this beautiful center, we bless everyone. Blessing those that are in our hearts, we bless everyone. In gratitude, we say together, and so it is. So it is. Amen. Amen. moment that we get to activate the law of circulation. Um, there's just so much known that we are in this movement of circulation and as we give we receive. So I just ask and accept that your offerings today, your tithes are to this beautiful center and all that is being stretched and grown in this center which you see is so much. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your generous gifts. I bless you both in these baskets and go forth and thank you. Thank you.